For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. have migrated south where they'll remain until spring. Which reminds me of the girl I live with, Irma Peterson. Not that she's gone south because she's right here with me in New York City. She may be here, but believe me, her brain is in Miami. Now, don't misunderstand. I, I love her. And there's really nothing wrong with her except that... Well, for instance, the other day I was reading the paper and I said, Irma... Yes, Jane? This is very interesting. It says here that soybeans have a thousand and one uses. They're even using them to make paint with. Soybeans? Gosh, that must make the paint awfully lumpy. <laughs> yep, that's my Irma. A living contradiction to the scientific theory that no one can live in a vacuum. Oh, well. She's still my roommate, and I'll stick up for her any time. Right now, we're both in the apartment, and everything's quite normal, I think. Oh, no, it isn't. Irma is covering up the calendar with her hand. Irma. Yes, Jane? Why are you covering the calendar with your hands? It's a secret. What do you mean, secret? Tomorrow's my birthday. Well, why the whispering? I want to give myself a surprise party. <laughs> oh, no. Look, honey, no one ever surprises themselves. Oh, yes, they do. Remember the time I added up eight and eight? Yeah. And I got 16? Yes. Well, I, wasn't I surprised? <laughs> that was an accident. But um, about your birthday party, honey, you don't have to go around whispering because I've already made plans for the day. Plans? Yes, honey, I'm giving you a birthday party, and I've invited all our friends. Oh, Jane, it's so sweet of you. You're the best friend a girl ever had. Oh, thank you, honey. Sometimes I wish you were twins. Then if one of you got married, I could still go on living with the one that got jilted. <laughs> That's a nice thought for Journey's End. Now, here, sweetie, here's the list of names I invited to your party. Oh, let me see. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor Kropotkin. Oh, and Richard Rhinelander and the Martins and... Al? Oh, Jane, I, I wish you hadn't set, sent Al an invitation. Why? Don't you want him to come to your birthday party? E yes, but I'd rather have him think it was a Halloween party. I don't want him to know I'm getting any older. <laughs> don't be foolish, Irma. Well, you know what they say. A girl should always marry a man older than she is, and I'm afraid I'll lose Al. That's ridiculous. Al must be at least three years older than you are. But he won't be if I keep on having birthdays. <laughs> Oh, Irma, stop worrying. Besides, I can't understand what you see in that unemployment bench warmer. Oh, uh, Jane, you don't know the real Al. I'll admit he doesn't work and he has no ambition, but to me, he's the man of my dreams and I hope he never wakes up. You know, I think you'll get your wish. <laughs> now, tell me, honey, do you okay this invitation list as is? Oh, it's... It's fine, Jane, but I would like to invite one more person. Who, some friend of yours? No, some friend of yours. Richard's mother. Mrs. Rhinelander? Oh, I know she's society and lives on Park Avenue, but she seemed to like me the two times she was here before. Oh, but honey, I... Uh, well, I, I don't know how to explain it, but, well, Mrs. Rhinelander's always so busy with her high social affairs, like, uh... Well, like, like charity bazaars, horse shows, riding to the hounds. Yes, I know, and shooting grouches. Grouches? <laughs> yes, those little fat ducks. Irma, that's grouse. <laughs> Honey, that's not what I mean. It, it's just that, well, frankly, I wouldn't know how to go about asking her. Well, couldn't you ask Richard to invite her? Well, I don't know, honey. Richard and I have only just started seeing each other again, and then... Oh, no, Irma, it's preposterous. Oh, try, Jane. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little ballet dancers. 
one on her toes, the other still spinning. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up. Oh, what difference does it make? <laughs> Why, Professor? Well, girls, I received the invitation to Irma's party tomorrow night, and I was wondering, would you like I should bring my fiddle? Maybe you'll want to have dancing. Oh, that'd be swell, Professor. Have you decided what kind of costume you're going to wear? Costume? Oh, I forgot to tell you, sweetie. I thought we should make your birthday a little different this year, so I decided it's going to be a costume affair. Oh, well, I was thinking I would come as a sea captain, Jamie, because every time I walk into my room, I feel as though I've gone down with the ship. <laughs> oh, gee, I, I, I wonder what I should wear. Uh, oh, maybe I'll come as Pocahontas, then a, Al could come as John Smith and save my life. What are you going to wear, Jane? Well, I thought I'd like to come as Joan of Arc. Oh, I see, then Richard could come as Noah. <laughs> Sweetie, you've got the wrong arc, but the right idea. Oh, my darling, I want to get you something nice for your birthday, and since I'm an old friend, I want you should tell me what you'd like. Oh, uh, Professor, you don't have to bring me a present. You work hard for your money, and as they say it, it isn't the gift, it's the value. <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean. It's the thought behind it. Yeah, so why don't you save your money and just give me the thought behind it? <laughs> Never mind, I'm, I'll think of something nice. Tell me, Janie, is Mrs. O'Reilly coming to the party? Well, I sent her an invitation. Why do you ask? Well, I just want to be prepared. I think I'll come as a straw man, so when that old crow shows up, I can scare her away from me. <laughs> Look, Professor, will you do me a favor? Janie, for you, anything in the world. All right. Then at the party, try to be nice to Mrs. O'Reilly. All right, Janie, but it's a cruel world. And speaking of cruelty, I think I'll go back to that torture chamber I call my room. <laughs> Goodbye, girl. Well, all right, Irma, let's not waste time. I want to straighten this room up. Oh, I'll help you, Jane. Okay, but only with the understanding that you stop sweeping things under the rug. All our furniture is standing at an angle. Why don't you use the Hoover vacuum cleaner? Because the Democrats won this year, and I didn't think it was patriotic. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. <laughs> Hello, Al, honey. Got your invitation, chicken, and want you to know I'm getting you the best present Tiffany's can offer. Oh, Al, from Tiffany's? Yeah, just as soon as my latest deal comes through. Oh, <laughs> not another deal. What is it this time? Putting straps on beer bottle caps and selling them for wristwatches? <laughs> no, would conflict with prevailing patents. Now, this one is a special device for thugs who attend a hot it. It's a blackjack with built-in band-aids. So when the victim is slugged, he automatically gets first aid. <laughs> Pretty creative, don't you think? Oh, it's great. Jane, you've got to admit it. Al is one who is always on his toes. That's only because his landlady has locked him out and he's trying to get in through the transom. <laughs> Ignore her, chicken. What plans you made for your party? Oh, gee, I'm so excited. What are you going to wear, Al? Well, that's not my problem. Got something else on my mind. And in that case, there's only one man to call. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Tamara is Irma's birthday. Want to get her a gift. What do you got? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Brass knuckles? <laughs> no, Al, no costume jewelry. <laughs> what else, Joe? A beautiful miniature of Abraham Lincoln? Hey, where'd you get it, Joe? Oh, you just finished printing some $5 bills. <laughs> Any day now, they're going to take our phone out. Please, Jane, I'm talking to a gentleman. Say, Joe, I think I'll run over and see Dallinger, the jeweler. Hey, what do you mean he's all tied up? Oh, your boy's just left him and he's all tied up. <laughs> well, I'll be over anyway. Thank you and goodbye, noble friend. Come on, chicken, I want you to help me pick out your gift. All right, Al. Come in. Hello, Jane. Oh, Richard, of all people, is anything wrong? Oh, not at all. I just wanted to check this invitation I received to Irma's birthday party. It says costume party. Well, what about it? Are you kidding, Jane? No, Richard, you've got to wear a costume. Oh, fine. And at this late hour. 
Well, I'll think of something. I know. I'll wear a jailbird outfit. Oh, Richard. Then if the income tax man comes to question me, I can go with him without changing clothes. Oh, oh you and your Wall Street jokes. <laughs> uh, Richard, I just got a thought. Uh, hmm? Well, uh, Irma wants me to... Oh, Richard, it, it's preposterous, but... Well, Richard, do you think that... Uh, do you think that your mother would... Come to Irma's birthday party. Why, I'm sure she would, Jane. Mother's very fond of you, and she says Irma's the most refreshing child she's ever met. I'll tell her she's welcome. Oh, more than welcome, Richard. And as for you, young lady, when are you coming back to work for me as my secretary? Well, uh, I'm thinking about it, but well, there are a lot of problems involved. Oh, there are, are there? Well, maybe this will eliminate some of them. <sighs> Richard, you're bribing me. Not a bad bribe, was it? No. I've kind of got the feeling that the overtime work could be fun. <laughs> well, I'll see you at the party, Richard. Good night. Good night, Jane. Jane! Jane! Well, she's not here, Al. Hey, chicken, look at this note on the tape. It's from Jane. Well, what's it say? Uh, Irma... Mrs. Rhinelander is coming to your party. Oh, that's wonderful. Just a second, chicken. Do not think this is fair. You and Jane inviting your friends? Why can't I have a friend of mine to the party? Show them what a swell gal I got. Oh, I guess that'd be all right, Al. Who did you wish to invite? There is only one man I would invite. Who, Al? Who else but Joe. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, he's a regular guy, and he wants to meet you. I admit, if you want references about him, you have to go to the police station. But Joe's a pretty lonely guy. He don't get out much. And when he does, he's trailed. Oh, but, but Mrs. Rhinelander is coming, and I, I don't know how she and Joe will get along, and uh, what will Jane think? No one has to know Joe is here. He'll be wearing a disguise and a mask. Okay, Al. Uh, tonight, the upper world will mix with the underworld. Gee, maybe I better not come. Why not, Jacob? Because everybody says I'm out of this world. <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Here's proof. Mary Louise Shine, registered nurse, whose smile wins recruits for her proud profession. A Scarsdale, New York girl, Mary Louise graduated from Georgetown University School of Nursing. Now her picture is appearing in magazines, newspapers, and on billboards in the campaign urging young Americans to make nursing their career. Former patients won't be surprised that Mary Louise was chosen model nurse for this campaign. They'll remember her cheering smile. The recent bride of a Chicago doctor, Mary Louise herself said, No other toothpaste gets teeth so bright. That's why my smile will always be a Pepsodent smile. Like Mary Louise Shine, people all over America agree. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests, thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Irium over the brands they'd been using at home. Yes, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one for its cool, minty taste, for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try a new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. <laughs> night of the party, and since Richard is coming, I want to have everything he likes. Now, let's see. He likes Paul Masson champagne, a mild cigar, and strong coffee. Of course, with Al, there's no problem. Al likes anything he can get as long as it's for nothing. As for Irma, she too has been contributing her best efforts. First, she baked a cake, and I must say it came out very well. Then she covered it with, with frosting, which looked very nice. A little later when I looked at it, Irma had lettered, Happy Birthday, very beautifully across the top in large raised letters. I didn't know what she used to make the lettering until I happened to notice two empty tubes of Pepsodent next to the cake. <laughs> 
Grandma. Yes, Jane. Tell me something. Did you use pepsodent for this lettering instead of frosting? Yes. Why? Well, frosting always gives me cavities, and pepsodent is good for the teeth. <laughs> With that remark, I sent Irma out for ice cream and called Mrs. O'Reilly to help me get things ready. Is everything on the table, Mrs. O'Reilly? Yes, Janie. Is there anything else I can do? No, and thanks a million. You've been a wonderful help. Oh, glad to do it, Janie. Uh, by the way, do you have any strong glue? Yes, there's a tube right there on the shelf. Oh, thank you. I need it for my new eyelashes. You know, <laughs> there's an awful lot of winking to be done at these parties, and I don't want any accidents. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll all have a good time, and I do hope you and the professor will get along. Oh, I hope so too, Janie. If I do say so, I have quite a crush on the man. Sure. <laughs> the professor just likes to tease me. Oh, maybe so, Janie. Oh, I understand Richard will be at the party. Yes, and he's bringing his mother. I hope it'll be a nice party and that nothing goes wrong. Hello, Jane. Hello, Miss O'Reilly. Irma. Didn't you pick up the ice cream I ordered? Well, I didn't want to take it because there was something wrong with it. It was smoking. Sweetie, that's from the dry ice it's packed in. Dry ice? Oh, I thought it tasted funny for ice cream. <laughs> you want me to go back? No, I'll have them deliver it. Irma, you said something about a surprise guest coming this evening. Who is it? Oh, five feet two, eyes of blue, kitchy kitchy coo, kitchy coo coo. Irma, <laughs> I'm in no mood for charades. Who is it? Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, Jane, it's getting late. We, we better get into our costumes. My goodness, it is getting late. I'd better get right upstairs and get into my costume. Well, what are you coming as, Miss O'Reilly? Well, I felt that I'd like to wear something Spanish. So I asked the professor for a suggestion. And he said I should come as a hacienda. <laughs> Why, that's a large house. <laughs> oh, wait till I get me hands on him. No wonder he said I had a perfect veranda for it. <laughs> The little apartment really looks very gala. People are coming in wearing the most unusual costumes, and with everyone wearing masks, it's impossible to tell who is who. Irma, I recognize, she's wearing a little girl's dress and carrying a piece of meat in her hand. Irma, who are you supposed to be? I couldn't find any sheep, so I'm little Mary had a lamb chop. <laughs> And the professor I recognize, he's dressed as Satan. Professor, what made you pick the costume of Satan? Well, I thought it would be appropriate since the room I live in reminds me of Devil's Island. <laughs> oh, here comes someone in a very unique costume, an old witch. Hello, Jane. Why, Mrs. Rhinelander, I didn't recognize you. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's just grand seeing you in Irma again. Happy birthday, Irma, dear, and many of them. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Rhinelander, and many of them to you. Oh, well, I'd rather not think of it. After all, I'm two score and 17. Gee, you don't look as old as a Gettysburg address. Irma. <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, and Richard, look at you in a policeman's uniform. Well, it was all I could get at the last minute. Oh, well, this should be fun. Maybe later on I'll uh, wind up in the arms of the law. Yes, and maybe you'll get a life sentence. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, Irma, uh, where's Al? Oh, he's late, and gee, I can't understand it. He generally arrives the same time the food does. Well, I wonder what can be detaining him. Hello? Hello, Jane? Al, why aren't you here at the party? I'm across the street in the drugstore. Been watching your window and do not like what I'm seeing. You got a mean streak in you. Well, what do you mean? What's the idea inviting a cop to the party? <laughs> cop? Oh, Al, that's Richard. Hmm. That guy always did have a sadistic sense of humor. <laughs> of course, ain't got nothing personal against cops. It's just that they have made all my friends exclusive. I gotta get a pass to see him. So either Richard takes off that uniform or I don't come in. 
Well, uh, hold it, Al. Anything wrong, Gabe? Oh, Gabe? this is unbelievable. Al says the sight of your uniform unnerves him, and he won't come in unless you take it off. Al won't be here. Oh, without Al, it won't be a birthday party. I might just as well not have been born. <laughs> now, don't cry, Irma. If Al feels that way, the solution is simple. Uh, Jane, do you have a sheet? Why, yes, Richard. What for? I'll take this cap and jacket off and wrap the sheet around me, and with a towel turban, I'll be the Sheik of Araby. Oh, Richard, that's so sweet of you. Now all you need is a camel. You know, one of those horses with the two gas tanks. <laughs> well, now, just a minute. Al, Richard is going to change his costume, so hurry over. Goodbye. Oh, Richard, you're wonderful. You can change right in that room. Oh, Professor, looking for something? Look, she's here, Mrs. O'Reilly. Why, Professor, that witch is Mrs. Rhinelander. Irma. <laughs> Mrs. Rhinelander? Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought it was Mrs. O'Reilly without a costume. <laughs> no, Professor, that's Mrs. O'Reilly over there in that Spanish costume, the one you just finished dancing with. How do you like that? And I thought that heavy veil over her face was supposed to give her an air of mystery. It just shows you you can never tell a book by its cover. And here I almost started reading a horror story. <laughs> Mrs. Rhinelander, may I be honored with this dance? Yes, Professor, I was waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> oh, the radio is playing a zamba. Can you dance to this music? Why not? Don't you think I know a waltz when I hear it? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Oh, Irma, isn't she sweet? Yes. And just think someday you and Richard will be married and you'll have a baby and she'll be your grandmother. Yes, Irma. Miss Stacy? Oh, look, another policeman. You weren't invited. I know. I want to talk with you two. Step into the kitchen here. Now, look here, officer. This is a private party. I don't know what's going Stacey, on here, I'm but... I'm from headquarters. We got a tip. There's a character here named Joe. Joe? Irma, is that Al's friend, Joe? I won't talk. I'm no stupid pigeon. <laughs> Lady, we have nothing against Joe except that we want him for questioning. I don't know what disguise he's wearing, so I'll just go out there and mosey around. Irma Peterson, how could you invite that character? Well, Al begged me, and when he does that, it brings out the mother in me. I couldn't turn down my own son. <laughs> I mean, uh, can't you realize the humiliation we're facing? Richard is here, Mrs. Rhinelander. We'll all be taken away in the police wagon. Why? Why? Honey, let me explain to you. Joe is, well, in the vernacular, Joe is hot. Oh, that's silly. How can he be hot when Al says he just got out of the cooler? <laughs> <laughs> Irma, you don't understand. Richard will never talk to me again. Oh, I'm sorry, Jean. Sorry? You're always sorry. You were sorry the time you put peroxide in the turkey dressing because I said I liked white meat. <laughs> you were sorry the time you dipped my lipstick into molasses because I said I wanted to be sweet to Richard. <laughs> Hey, Jane, what's the idea of double-crossing me? Richard is still wearing that uniform. I've got news for you, Al. That's not Richard. That policeman is the real McCoy, and he's looking for your friend, Joe. Joe? Holy mackerel. Excuse me. Irma, what are you doing? Oh, well, Al says all they serve in jail is bread and water. I'm making some sandwiches. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I'm leaving. Oh, Jane, this is the most delightful party. Really, it's too bad it's not going to be written up in the newspapers. It still may be. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mrs. Rhinelander. Now, look, Irma, crying won't help. We've got to face the music. Well, I'm not thinking of that. I'm just heartbroken about Al. Al? What about him? Well, look at him dancing with that tall, shapely blonde. Where? <laughs> Oh, yes. I noticed Richard give her the eye, too. He's hugging her. Now he's squeezing her hand. Oh, I hate all men. I despise them. If I was president, I'd pass a law making all men illegal, even on holidays. <laughs> uh, pull yourself together, Irma. They're coming this way. I, I won't even talk to him. Good night, chicken. Lovely party. Happy birthday. I'm taking Miss Delilah home. Come, my pet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
don't cry, honey. It, it, it's all you can expect of someone like him. I'm surprised this hasn't happened before. Delilah, I hate that name. It was a Delilah who ruined Napoleon. <laughs> honey, Delilah was Samson's sweetheart. Oh, she probably ran around with everybody. <laughs> I hate men. I'm through with them. I'm going to take that piece of wedding cake I've had under my pillow for three months and eat it. <laughs> oh, I'm through. Well, now, now, don't get hysterical, honey. <laughs> oh, it's you, Al. Yeah, changed my plans, chicken. Just put Delilah in a cab and sent her home. Well, you should have gone home with her the way you were drooling over. Well, she's a pretty snappy number. To coin a phrase, Delilah is hot in six states. You see, chicken, Delilah is Joe. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, had to get him out of here. That policeman was on the make, so to speak. And Joe don't like the way them guys pinch. Oh, Al, now I understand. And all the time I thought, oh, I'll never doubt you again. That's the spirit, chicken. And to make your birthday party something you'll never forget, I'm going to give you a kiss for every year. How old are you, chicken? Oh, what's the difference? You start kissing me, time will fly. <laughs> and you know something? That's a silly remark, because if there's one person who doesn't know what time it is, it's my friend Irma. <laughs> Your winning smile. Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Yes, it's true. It's borne out by the vote of thousands of people who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Arium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better, makes their breath cleaner, and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. So try a new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly, and Donald Woods as Richard. Music was under the direction of Led Gluskin. Your investment in Christmas seals will pay you dividends in the form of a healthier community. Buy and use Christmas seals generously this year. This is Wendell Nile speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. Yeah.